Let's begin the wild roller coaster ride of this episode and explore aspects of quantum theory, consciousness, and the implications of an infinite universe and some of their great known unknowns. The physical universe that we live in is only our perception. Once our physical bodies die, there's an infinite beyond, suggests scientists at the Max Planck Institute for Physics in Munich. Some believe, they say, that consciousness travels to parallel universes after death. The beyond is an infinite reality that is much bigger, which this world is rooted in. In this way, our lives in this plane of existence are encompassed, already surrounded. Our body dies, but the spiritual quantum field continues. In this way, they suggest, we are immortal. The Max Planck scientists echo famed British physicist Roger, Sir Roger Penrose, who argues that if a person temporarily dies, this quantum information is released into the universe from what he calls microtubules, a structural component of human cells that carry quantum information, information stored at the subatomic level. However, if they are resuscitated, the quantum information is channeled back into the microtubules, and that is what sparks a near-death experience. If they're not revived, Penrose says, and the patient dies, it's possible that this quantum information can exist outside the body, perhaps indefinitely, as a soul. Penrose's theory has been described as an audacious and quite possibly crackpot theory about the quantum origins of consciousness. Penrose believes that we must go beyond neuroscience and into the mysterious world of quantum mechanics to explain our rich mental life. But no one knows quite what to make of this theory. Penrose developed it along with American anesthesiologist Stuart Hamroth. But conventional wisdom goes something like this. Their theory is almost certainly wrong. But since Penrose is so brilliant, described by physicist Lee Smolin as one of the very few people I've met in my life who without reservation I would call a genius, we'd be foolish to dismiss the, their theory out of hand. While scientists are still in heated debates about what exactly consciousness is, the University of Arizona's Hameroff and Penrose conclude that it is information stored at a quantum level. Penrose agrees. He and his team have found evidence that protein-based microtubules carry subatomic quantum information. It was Hameroff's idea that quantum coherence happens in these microtubules, the protein structures inside our brain's neurons. And what are microtubules, we might ask? There are tubular structures inside eukaryotic cells that play a role in determining the cell's shape as well as its movements, which include cell division. Hamref suggests that these microtubules are the quantum device that Penrose has long sought for in his theory. In neurons, microtubules help control the strength of synaptic connections, and their tube-like shape projects them protects them, rather, from the surrounding noise of, of the larger neuron. The microtubule symmetry and lattice structure reeks of something quantum, says Penrose. Somehow our consciousness is the reason the universe is here, Penrose says. There's intelligent life, or consciousness, somewhere else in the universe, he added. The universe and the observer exist as a pair. I cannot imagine a consistent theory of the universe that ignores consciousness, says Stanford University's Russian-American theoretical physicist Andre Lin in his paper, Life, Universe, and Consciousness, about the central mystery of our time, concluding that consciousness may exist by itself, even in the absence of matter, just like gravitational waves, ripples in space-time, that may exist in the absence of protons and electrons. The role of consciousness, says Lind, is very much like that of relativity before Einstein. Dan Hooper, head of the astrophysicist group at the Fermi National Accelerator Laboratory and author of At the Edge of Time, with whom I've corresponded by email, says if space is truly infinite, the implications are staggering. With an infinite expanse of space, he says it would be hard to see any reason why there should not be an infinite number of galaxies, stars, and planets, and even an infinite number of intelligent or conscious beings scattered throughout this limitless, limitless volume. That, that's the thing about infinity, he says. It takes things that are otherwise very unlikely and makes them all inevitable. The nature of infinity is such that with an infinite amount of space, there are an infinite number of universes, collections of atoms and other particles located at specific places at specific times, oriented in almost exactly the same way that they are on our Earth world. 
With an infinite space, suggests Hooper, there are an in inevitably an infinite number of universes that are indistinguishable from our own. These worlds, you say, contain a star that is nearly identical to the sun, which is orbited by a planet that is nearly identical to Earth, which contains upon it people who are nearly identical to you and me, he writes. If space as we know it extends forever, this conclusion is inevitable. All things and all events that are possible, no matter how unlikely, will exist and will occur within this great collection of space. But what about the fate of universes beyond ours that Hooper writes about in The Edge of Time? The expansion of space, he observes, divides it into an equally into a, a number of casually disconnected regions. For all intents and purposes, these regions are not part of a single universe. Rather, each is a universe on its own. Each point in space is surrounded by an impenetrable cosmic horizon, the size of which is determined by how fast the space is expanding. The faster the space is expanding, the closer this cosmic horizon will be to the point that it surrounds. During eras of accelerating expansion, such as our current era, era space is continuously being divided into a large number of disconnected universes. During the epoch of inflation that lasted from 10 to 36 seconds after the Big Bang, space expanded at an absolutely staggering rate, writes Huber, tearing space and everything, and everything in it apart. No two objects, even elementary particles, remain close enough to one another for long enough to interact. Two objects separated by the width of an atom at the beginning of inflation were trillions of miles apart from one another by the time it was over, only a minuscule fraction of a second later. Inflation took regions of space that had once been neighbors and forever disconnected them from each other. So utterly complete was this act of sequestration that these regions became more than merely distant. Inflation left them within entirely different universes. A small piece of space that emerged from inflation went on to form our universe. There is good reason to think that everything we can see from our most powerful telescopes, concludes Hooper, represents only the smallest tip of the cosmic iceberg. In Beyond Biocentrism, Rethinking Time, Space, Consciousness, and the Illusion of Death, scientist and philosopher Robert Lanza at the Wake Forest School of Medicine asks, does the soul exist? The new scientific theory he propounds says that we are immortal and exist outside of time. Biocentrism postulates that space and time are not the hard objects we think, Death does not exist in a timeless, spaceless world. His new scientific theory suggests that death is not the terminal event we think. There are an infinite number of universes, he says, and everything that could possibly happen occurs in some universe. Death does not exist in any, in any real sense in these scenarios. All possible universes are exist simultaneously, regardless of what happens in any of them. Although individual bodies are destined to self-destruct, the alive feeling, the who am I, is just a 20-watt fountain of energy operating in the brain. But this energy doesn't go away at death, he says. One of the surest axioms of science is that energy never dies. It can neither be created nor destroyed. But does this energy transcend from one world to another? Thank you, Val Landy signing off. And please don't forget to click on the subscribe button and support us by contributing at patreon.com. Thank you, thank you, thank you.